Today we shall talk about comparators, what makes them different and what they have in common with operation amplifiers and the use cases that are best fitted for them. Hello everybody, I'm Claudio Hütte and this is Accidental Science, the electronic series. The operation amplifier is one of the most used integrated circuits in analog electronics, but today we shall focus on its less renowned cousin, the comparator. Like uh, operation amplifiers, uh, comparators have two differential inputs and one output, but unlike op-amps, uh, comparators usually are not fitted with uh, a push-pull output, but they have uh, an open collector output. As the name implies, comparators are used to compare two voltages from their differential inputs. With an operation amplifier, you can uh, compare two voltages respectively at the non-inverting positive input and at the negative uh, inverting input, uh, uh, for example, to make a voltage detector exploiting uh, their high gain. Uh, however, this can be done uh, for low speed applications uh, because as you can see there is no feedback resistor here uh, so at open loop uh, uh, operation amplifiers are quite slow. On the other hand um, comparators are not meant to linearly output a full range of values but only two values representing two states uh, high when uh, the positive input uh, is higher than the negative input and low otherwise. So you can use an operation amplifier as a comparator uh, for a low performance application, maybe because uh, a spare part from available from the same package uh, is used uh, as wear in the circuit. And on the opposite side, under certain very limited circumstances, uh, you can even use a spare comparator to work as a poor operation amplifier. But while on some comparators you can provide negative feedback uh, as you would with an operation amplifier to amplify the differential inputs, uh, the intended use is open loop uh, with uh, the output just sweeping uh, to the two opposite level. Uh, indeed, they are designed to magnify this behavior by mm, pr promoting switching speed versus linearity. So let's see a hypothetical application where a comparator fits best. Suppose a circuit where a seismic transducer uh, that when oscillates above a given uh, amplitude must trigger uh, an interrupt into a microprocessor that then will count and gauge the width of the oscillations. The oscillations can be very fast but but most importantly, a delay after the tripping point uh, would undermine the ability to reliably count and uh, uh, gauge the width of the oscillations. Furthermore, the signal uh, from the sensor has a large uh, dynamic range uh, with very small voltages uh, when imperceptible earth vibrations happen to uh, very large peaks uh, in the case of earthquake. A comparator is perfect here. Its inputs uh, can accept very large voltage oscillations uh, from microvolts uh, to 10 uh, of volts and also it is easy to provide a protection without undermining the sensitivity. And uh, with a potentiometer uh, it is possible to set the trigger level at which the output trips. And as mentioned earlier, most comparators offer an open, uh, an open collector output, uh, so you can adapt uh, the output level at whatever the following circuit may require using a pull-up resistor. And here I've made a magnification of what's inside the operation uh, the comparator, sorry. <laughs> um, and it is a transistor with an open collector and an open emitter. The open emitter is connected to ground and the open collector is connected through a pull-up resistor to the positive 5 volt rail this, that is the same used by the microprocessor adapting the voltage while the comparator itself is powered through the positive and negative 15 volt uh, ra power rails. 
I'm not sure this would make sense <laughs> in a real uh, seismologic application <laughs> but uh, but let's expand the circuit uh, uh, to be able to detect and set two levels one at positive and one at negative displacement uh, to detect uh, uh, quake asymmetries um, however in any case you want to count both uh, and go both indifferently with the same microprocessor this is called a window detector. In this case, a second comparator with a potentiometer is connected to negative, and uh, uh, and this can and this allows us to detect uh, when the oscillation uh, goes beyond the negative threshold. And because the uh, output uh, is uh, open collector, uh, it can be connected in parallel with the other output uh, of the other uh, comparator, making a logic OR of the two outputs uh, that uh, provide a, the, the signal to the microprocessor. Some comparators uh, offer a push-pull output, and this is the case uh, with the TS3011 which has uh, right relay ray inputs and uh, uh, can work at uh, supply pa uh, voltage of 5 volt uh, up to 5 volt uh, and it is very very fast because at 5 volt uh, it has a propagation delay of just about uh, uh, 10 uh, 11 nanoseconds and uh, a time rise and time full time uh, the switching time, uh, the actual switching time that is about one nanosecond. It is really fast. And this can be used uh, to detect uh, uh, crossing uh, threshold signal uh, for a frequency meter, for example. Because comparators switch their output quickly, some care must be taken to uh, design the layout of the circuit, avoiding to couple the inputs uh, with parasitic capacitances through the PCB traces and providing bypass capacitors uh, directly at the power pins. Because of the fast switching, fast current surges occur and this swift variation in current could be affected by even small inductances and uh, an inch long uh, trace on the PCB could show enough inductance uh, to make a fast comparator to starve <laughs> when it's most in need, as the inductor uh, behaves as a resistor at fast current transients. So a capacitor uh, between the power and ground uh, connected directly to the pins, uh, uh, the power pins uh, of the of the comparator, um, could could provide the required surge of current when the transients happen. Without this precaution, uh, the comparator could self-oscillate or ring. A similar effect, uh, kind, of ringing, kind of ringing, can be seen uh, when a slowly varying uh, voltage is compared to a fixed voltage, for example, and um, and this is and this happens because uh, when the output switches. Uh, this could cause a small variation, internal variation uh, at the threshold voltage uh, that caused the comparator to trip back and then trip uh, again and so forth. For the moment uh, the varying voltage is changing uh, enough to hold a stable condition. Here is an example, a slowly varying voltage uh, uh, from a ramp generator is um, compared with, to a fixed voltage uh, threshold at this level and when the two voltages are comparable, uh, the output uh, not only switches, but uh, uh, a ringing oscillation takes place. Let's zoom it, let's zoom it a little bit. Uh, here, is, here we go, we have the ringing oscillation. To avoid this problem, a very little uh, feedback, uh, uh, positive feedback uh, through a high resistor connected to the output uh, would provide a positive feedback that forces the threshold to move swiftly, move a little bit uh, and uh, further to amplify this uh, uh, difference here and uh, making a, a high stereosis uh, that ultimately would prevent uh, instability. And some comparators come with a built-in high stereosis. 
and adding a resistor, a feedback resistor, positive feedback resistor, um, the uh, threshold is shifted a little bit uh, when the output uh, switches and this provides uh, a stabilization. Let's check it out and here we go. We, have, we can see there are no longer uh, oscillations and sometimes it is enough to provide a temporary hysteresis to, that cover just the time a slowly variable voltage takes uh, to change enough. Uh, and this, uh, to do this, uh, the positive feedback can be given through a capacitor that would generate a spike uh, that temporarily shifts the reference voltage against the comparing voltage. In summary, you can see a comparator uh, as an operational amplifier that don't need feedback and with the just a non-off output. The only feedback normally used with comparators is positive to create a hysteresis and with the hysteresis you can create a Schmidt trigger. Comparators find applications in every situation where two voltages need to be compared and a non-linear output switching condition is required. And finally, fast comparators need some precautions uh, to prevent self-oscillations and ringing at the trip point. Whether you are a professional or a hobbyist, uh, I hope this video had provided some useful information. And as always, if you have any question, correction, observation or even just to say hello, please leave your comment in the section down below. For now, that's all folks. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye!